Robert Woods has been cut. We're going to talk about the top 10 free agent wide receivers that could replace him right here on Titans Today. Welcome into Titans today. I'm Abby Alonzo. We went over that Robert Woods has been cut along with Taylor Lewan, Randy Bullock, and Zach Cunningham. Rand Carthen has got the ball rolling. I'm sure there are going to be moves made moving forward from this. And if you trust him, if you like what he's doing, if you think he's getting rid of the dead weight, like this video, because I think he's about to do some great things to this roster, starting with those four cuts on Wednesday, but let's talk about Robert Woods. Robert Woods was cut on Wednesday following Taylor Lewan. The receiver saved $12 million for the Titans. His cut saved $12 million, which needed to happen considering what this receiver room looked like. We know that there is a weapon needed here. There's something missing. These guys can't get it done alone. Robert Woods wasn't getting it done himself. Rand Carthen said, look, dude, I got to let you go. He let him go. He saved the money. And now the Titans went from being $23.5 million over the cap to having $11.3 million in cap space to pay some more of their guys. They saved a total of 37 million. $0.9 million with those four cuts on Wednesday, which is huge considering all the moves that need to be made during the offseason. Chad Brinker, the assistant GM who just got brought in, might be playing a small role or maybe a big role in all the movement right now, but we're seeing things happen. This is a good sign. This means that things are going to change. It's going to look very different, but was cutting Robert Woods the right move? Do you agree with it? Do you think Rand Carthen made the right decision? Type Y for yes, type N for no. Let me know in the comment section. All right, let's talk about the top 10 NFL 2023 free agent wide receivers that are on the market right now. And if they would be a good fit for the Titans, starting off with none other than OBJ. His name has been all over the rumor mill for the entire season. It's He's going to pop back up during the offseason. He's a good receiver when he's healthy. When he was at his peak, he was making the catches. He was iconic. Everybody loved him. But we haven't seen that peak in a while. He suffered from that ACL injury in 2021. He didn't play in 2022. Can he get back to the receiver he was before? And if he can, is that supposed to happen in Tennessee? That's a good question. He failed a couple tests on uh, whether he was ready to go. That's the big question. Whether he is fully healthy, we don't know. We'll see throughout the offseason whether he gets picked up by somebody if it is the Titans. Next up, Juju Smith-Schuster. Juju was on a one-year prove-it deal with the Chiefs. They were kind of looking at him to see, all right, dude, what you got? Can you, do you want to stay here? Can you produce? And he did relatively well. Apparently, the Chiefs are pretty interested in keeping him around. He is a good slot receiver, but not really the fit for what the Titans need, not to mention the Chiefs do look like they're going to keep him anyway. So somebody to look at, not really realistic that he lands in Tennessee. The Titans are making moves. There's no doubt they cut four guys in one day just about two weeks after the Super Bowl. They are not playing. We are going to keep you updated with all of the news, rumors, cuts, trades, signings, everything that happens during this 2023 NFL offseason. We are going to let you know, but you got to hit the sub button. We can't do it for you. If you want to stay in the loop, go down, hit that sub button. We got you covered. Moving on to Jacoby Myers, one of the best guys on this list, one of the best free agents out there right now. He's had an incredible time with New England. You, you watch his, his production increase as the years go on. In 2019, went from 26 receptions, under 400 yards, no touchdowns. And then you look at him in 2022, 67 receptions, 804 yards, six touchdowns, averaging about 12 yards per catch. He has dealt with a couple injuries, but that's the thing about this guy. He's, he's ending his rookie deal, right? 
He's a slot guy, but he can also win the outside. He did have a knee injury early on in the season, as well as a concussion in the middle of the season, which made him miss three games in 2022, but he played through it. In fact, that knee injury was apparently much more serious than he led on to everyone to believe. He played through it. He's a tough kid. He held up that offense quite a bit this season with all of the commotion they went through with Mac Jones and the running game and the chaos and the misunderstandings. He did a good job for New England, which is exactly why I hate to say it, but I don't think the Patriots let him walk. I think he's done a good job for them. I think he'll continue to do a good job for them, and I think they will resign him. So as much as we'd love to see Jacoby Myers in blue, it won't be Tennessee blue. Michael Thomas, man. MT used to be something, huh? It just, it doesn't look like he's ever going to get away from the injury bug. This guy was one of the elite receivers in the league back in 2019. He was incredible with the Saints. He just has a problem with staying healthy. Back in 2021, he did not play. 2020, the year before that, he only played less than half a season. And this past season, he came out really, really strong. It looks like we were getting the old Michael Thomas back in the NFL. He flashed, and then he got hurt again with the turf toe and the ankle, and it just it never stops. And, you know, as much as you want to give the guy credit because you know what he's capable of, capable of you've seen him do incredible things make some plays he's a great receiver with the contested catches and everything but he can't stay healthy and you wish he could but you can't pay a guy who hasn't played a full season in about four years you can't do it so he's a great receiver when he's healthy the problem is he's never healthy another guy who struggled with some injuries Julio Jones Back in the day, Julio Jones used to be Julio freaking Jones. He was incredible. He was an animal, a unit, but fell off with injuries. This is another guy. You see a prime receiver, an elite guy who can make things happen for a team, just not be able to do that anymore because they struggle with injuries. He He's, look, it's the knee, it's the shoulder, it's the hip, it's everything that's happened. He... He had over 1,000 yards from 2014 to 2019, and then it just kind of fell off. So you really don't know what you're getting with him. Do you really want to gamble, sign Julio Jones, hoping for the old Julio Jones, and you still got the banged-up receiver who can't play enough games for what it's worth? I don't know. Do you want the Titans to sign Julio Jones? Type S for sign. Type W if he, you think he's washed. Look, I got I to gotta say... I think it might be time to move on from Julio Jones. I hate to say it. He's an, a phenomenal athlete, but she got to be able to stay healthy. So type S for sign, type W for washed. Moving on to the second half of this list with DJ Chark. Chark is a guy who, in, in and out with the injuries, he flashed for both the Lions and the Jags when he was healthy. He's a good downfield target. He's quick. He can make the contested catches. The issue is, can he get healthy? And this is a common theme with this list, which might be why they're on this free agent top 10 list, because they're struggling with injuries. Teams aren't sure if they want to re-sign them. However, DJ Chark did have a good season with the Lions. He went in and out with the injuries, but he, when he was in, he flashed. And he's not necessarily a wide receiver one type of guy, but he is somebody that could help construct an offense. He's a good two or three. He's good to pair up with, I don't know, somebody like Traylon Burks. He could be a good addition to an offense that is looking to rebuild and retool, as Rand Carthen said, for the future. The next guy I want to look at is Nicole Hardman. He, ha Super Bowl champ here. I mean, you got to look at him as that. He had a good season, but again, with the injuries, week nine pelvis that kept him out most of the season. He tried to come back in that AFC championship, re-aggravated it, did not play in the Super Bowl. And look, most of his time in, in uh, Kansas City, he, sp he was stuck behind Tyreek Hill. They got rid of Tyreek Hill, sent him off, and this was Hardman's time to shine. He just, unfortunate injury at the time, but he's a speed threat on the outside. 
and he could help Burks on the inside. This is somebody that may be able to have that dual threat with Traylon Burks and whoever is the quarterback next season that's still up in the air. But this is somebody that, again, could bring a different type of – be a different type of weapon for the offense. He's somebody that – should absolutely be looked at if he doesn't re-sign with the Chiefs. They may want to keep him around. He did well when he wasn't injured. We'll have to play that one by ear. Alan Lazard, this is a guy I've talked about a couple times. He's He took a backseat to Christian Watson in the second half of the season up in Green Bay. But before that, he did have good production. He said at the end of the season that he had played his last game in Lambeau, meaning he is absolutely looking to go somewhere else. And I think Green Bay is kind of on the same page. They're trying to figure out their quarterback situation. Christian Watson is there. He kind of took the front, the, the, the driver's seat. Um, Alan Lazard, look, he's a big-bodied guy. He can make the contested catches. He's a good run blocker with – that, that's great for a Titans offense that really powers off of the run with Derrick Henry. He's a good run blocker. That'll add. So he's more than just a receiver. He can fit into that Titans offense pretty, pretty well. But you tell me, if you had to choose, if you were the GM and you had two guys to choose from, would you pick Miko Hardman or Alan Lazard? Type MH for Miko Hardman, AL for Alan Lazard. Let me know in the comment section. And moving on to Paris Campbell, number nine on the list. Campbell had a decent season up in Indianapolis. He struggled a little bit, but that is merely because a few injuries happened, but he also did not have a consistent quarterback. They were constantly wondering who's going to start this weekend. We've got a new head coach now. There was no chemistry, no consistency on that offense, which really does affect your receivers and their stats. But he did have a good season aside from those injuries he's a quick guy um this this was his first full season actually we did touch on the fact that he has a a few injury problems but nothing too concerning yet the only question is will indianapolis keep him around which is a good point considering they may trade up for that number one pick in the draft, grab a quarterback like C.J. Stroud or Bryce Young and keep Paris Campbell around to give those guys somebody to work with. If they do that, he's more than likely going to stay a cult. But if they don't, I mean, anything's up in the air at this point. You never know with the NFL offseason. He may be a good addition to the Titans offense. He's quick. He can make those catches. We'll see what happens there. And finally, Jarvis Landry, who was on a one-year deal with the Saints. He had a good first couple games until he was injured and he hurt his ankle, went on IR, came back and really wasn't the same. His production over the years, just less and less games being played. He, The yards are going down. This is a guy who is a veteran. He brings in that veteran experience, but he's 30 years old. He is a five-time pro bowler, though. That can't be slept on. And his last 1,000-yard season was in 2019. So is this guy washed? I mean, I, I don't know you call him washed. I think it's something to keep an eye on considering he's dealt with the injuries. He's missed 13 games the last two years. Again, this Titans team is literally the most injured in the league. They had the most fielded players in 2021, the most fielded players in 2022. You don't want to bring in somebody with plenty of injuries. You've got to try to steer clear of that. Although Jarvis Landry is a leader and he does bring the veteran experience and he showed that he's still got some talent and skill to him, is the injury bug too much to consider when bringing him in? Let me know. Those are the top 10 free agent wide receivers available during this off season. Who is a free agent wide receiver that you want the Titans to sign? They could be on the list. They could be somebody I've never even said on the show. Let me know in the comments section. We love to hear from you guys. And like I said, make sure to subscribe. 
this is just the beginning. Things are going to get rolling very, very soon, if I had to guess. I mean, you cut Taylor Lewan, Robert Woods, Zach Cunningham, and Randy Bullock. You've got to replace them. And I'm sure Rand Carthen and Mike Rabel are doing just that. They're in the works right now. We're going to keep you updated on everything we hear, every rumor, every news bit, every update. So make sure you hit that sub button. We'll be back soon.